Yeah, welcome. This is the first lecture of a series on 3D coordinate systems. It's part of the education in the Bachelor of Science, Geodesy and Geoinformation in Bonn. My name is Wolfgang Forstner and I will you first give a short introduction. Um, we have three main topics here. Uh, we will discuss the geometry of spatial motions and similarities. We will look into how to rep represent them and how to do estimation. That means estimating uh, these uh, motions and similarities from observed data. And we will ha always have a look into the uncertainty of these data. So our basic observations are uncertain, so the results will be uncertain and we have to look in how to uh, track this through the whole chain. There are a few examples which I will elaborate um, a little bit more uh, soon. Um, we have, of course, mobile mapping systems, which have many sensors. Um, we have to represent the mutual relations of the sensors and the motion of the vehicle and describe the uncertainty of these relations. So, the applications in our field are, for instance, in surveying. We want to integrate measurements from different viewpoints. So let's assume we have here two point clouds, one from one angle and one from another angle. We want to fuse them and in order to be able to do this we need to know the mutual relation between these two um, sensors uh, which have taken these point clouds. We have a similar problem if we want to evaluate deformation. So imagine you have a landslide uh, today and next year. We want to fuse these data and of course these deformations are much more smaller than what we have seen just now. Um, I already mentioned mobile mapping. So we have moving platforms and we would like to know how to uh, evaluate the data from these mobile platforms. Here you see an example. Um, this is a classical mobile mapping system. Uh, you have here this car with uh, several sensors. You have here several uh, GPS uh, antennas, three I see. Um, then we have two lasers. Uh, which uh, measure the distances to the objects. That means we have a very dense point cloud and we have several cameras in order to be able to interpret the data. And now of course we have these uh, two problems. The first one is that we want to know the mutual relation between these sensors. Um, so, so to say a systems calibration. And on the other hand, if the vehicle moves, we want to know the mutual relation between neighboring um, uh, positions of the car or tracking the car over uh, a longer time in order to be able to fuse all these data from different time steps. Um, we could also have a, a traffic monitoring from a moving platform. So here you have an example where the task is to observe what the cars are doing on the ground um, using a, a unmanned aerial vehicle, a UAV or a drone with a camera on it, which observes what's happening on the ground. And of course, now we have uh, two types of uh, motions. One is the motion of the sensor and the other one is the motion of the cars and uh, we want to know the mutual relations that means the motion of the cars the motion of the tent and of course the relative position between the ca ca uh, the camera and the ground so we have a lot of ca uh, coordinate systems in these two two applications we also have problems in photogrammetry or computer vision i only uh, want to mention a few so we have to model systems of cameras or LiDAR systems as we saw this but we also would like to do object tracking from one or ca more cameras for instance here we might be interested in um, observing a person and tracking it and finding out how it how it moves and um, so you see here the mobile phone and uh, the video taken by the mobile phone using a neural network procedure to actually estimate the position of the uh, different limbs of uh, this, uh, this woman. We also have applications in theoretical geodesy. So there we have satellites which move around the Earth and we want to know the relative position between these uh, satellites and the Earth. Sometimes we only have rotations, but we also, of course, need the coordinate transformation between the ground 
of that uh, of the Earth and the space. I give you an example here from the lunar reconnaissance orbiter. Um, you see here uh, the satellite and in the background the moon. Um, and we, in order to be able to um, observe what's happening or what the uh, uh, on the Earth or here to observe the the moon. Uh, find out uh, the landscape, we need to know the position of this um, orbiter uh, with respect to the ground of the Moon. So, we do not talk about all types of 3D coordinate systems, but we focus on rotations in 3D, we start with 2D, and uh, then we focus on motions in 2D and 3D, and we look into similarities where we also have scale differences between uh, the different coordinate systems. There are, of course, generalizations. Um, we need perspective mappings in uh, uh, computer vision and photogrammetry. And, of course, we need mappings on the sphere in satellite geodesy or in geoinformation for map projections. These are covered in special lectures. So, what types of questions uh, do we want to answer? The first thing is we want to discuss how to represent spatial motions and similarities. So, how can we do this using uh, our knowledge in basic mathematics? Um, how many parameters are necessary? If we don't know how many parameters are necessary, we can't do any estimation. So we need to know the number, the minimum number of uh, parameters. For instance, we could uh, think of a motion in 3D as a translation and a rotation. Um, uh, we would guess that would be six parameters. Now, let's assume we have a motion uh, over time and we, match, uh, we measure the relative motion between different times. We want to concatenate these motions or similarities. Uh, the question is, ca can we do this easily? And then, of course, we want to observe these transformations. We can't uh, observe them directly, generally, but we use observations such as points or uh, images. And um, the question is, how can we derive these transformations from these observed quantities? The observations will observations will not be outlier-free. So the question is also, how can we handle outliers? And finally, we have this problem of uncertainty in our observations, which we, which we want to track to the final result, the uncertain motion or similarity. And um, so we need to discuss how do we represent the uncertainty of a spatial motion. The translation we can use, we may use standard deviations for the position. How do we do this with the uh, rotations? Um, we also have to discuss this. So, this course um, has a certain workload, which is uh, three ECTS points uh, that corresponds to 90 hours workload uh, for a student. Uh, the lectures cover 15 hours, that means approximately 15 uh, video lectures. On an average, the lectures will be have different lengths depending on the topic. Um, then there will be exercises per week, um, so you are asked to spend uh, around three hours per week for all the exercises. And um, for the examinations, we have uh, two, uh, two examinations, uh, we assume that you spend about uh, 30 hours on it. So, the exercises, these are mandatory, um, you will get them every week. Uh, uh, they cover nominally 50, 45 points per exercise, uh, which means one point per minute, if you are perfectly prepared, which you, of course, need to achieve by working through the lectures. Um, the requirement for taking part in the examination is 50% of the points. There will be two written examinations, one midterm beginning of uh, December and one in end term in February probably. And um, we, you have one week time for the exercises. Uh, this will of course uh, show on the deadlines on the, on the which uh, on the exercise, you, uh, we will evaluate this within one week and then have an interactive discussion. Uh, you can ask questions and we will show you the results at the end. So, 
This uh, is my introduction. I welcome you to the lecture and the next lecture will be on motions and similarities in the plane. Thank you very much.